The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. There was a Yid, Rebbe Fo Abuav, from Tel Aviv. He was one of the big chazanim, and he was a moil in Tel Aviv. So when he was nifter, they wrote up about him, and a lot of stories came out about this Yid, a moil de Kazakh. So there's one story that I want to share with you. This Yid was a moil, and he got phone calls all the time. Thousands of phone calls to come be Mali Yiddish kids. He didn't charge. Whatever they gave him, they gave him. He didn't charge. And many times people would call him to be the Sandik because he was the Chazan. People knew him. He was a Chayhili Yid. Anyways, one day he gets a phone call that he should please come at 7.30 in the morning to a certain address in Tel Aviv to make a bris. He comes to the house. He knocks on the door and he sees a guy there without a yarmulke and the guy says, okay, I'm going to work now. You take care of that baby. Have a nice day. He walks right out. He goes into the house, and the mother is there. And the mother says, um, the cleaning lady is going to come in a few minutes. Um, I'm going out shopping. I want that when I come back from shopping, there's no more blood, and there's no more crying. Everything should be, kids should be sleeping in the crib nicely. Have a nice day. He says, I, I need to, I need, I need, I need, I need to make a bris. You know, you got to get 10 people. I got to get a, a sandik. I didn't know that this is the situation. I thought we we're going to be a regular bris. He says, sorry, you got about an hour and a half. I'll be back. I want everything perfect. Okay. He goes outside. He tries to find a minion. There's no minion. So what does he do? He came inside and he took the baby. He prepared the baby for a bris. And he took the baby on his lap. And he takes out the knife. And before he makes the bracha, he starts to cry. And he's crying and he's crying. And he's crying to Rabbi Nishalelem. And he says, look how low these people are. They're not interested in the bris. They just want to get it over with. They want to do it for whatever reason. But they're yidden. And they want to have their, their kid should be a gemalat. It's a beautiful thing. But on the other hand, what's going to be with this kid? No minion. No people to answer amen. No chash of a sandik. The moyles being the sandik is like that. But the yevid situation over here. And he started to cry. And he cried and he cried for 20 minutes. And he begged the Kodesh Baruch Hu that the Rabbi Shem should help, that this kid should take a get siyata deshmaya and deem the Rabbi Shem and Rikli Gevag, even though he's growing up in such a house. He made the bris and he bandaged up the baby and the baby wouldn't stop crying. And he held the baby and he shaked the baby nicely, you know, in a rhythm to try to get it to go to sleep. Finally, 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 the kid got to, went to sleep. And he, the cleaning lady came in, he gave over the kid to the cleaning lady, and he left. And he thought that that's the end of the story. But 12 and a half years later, he gets a knock on his door. Standing by the door is a lady with a 12 and a half year old boy. And the lady says, are you Rabbi Abu of the Chazan and the Moyal from Tel Aviv? He says, yes. He says, you made this boy's bris. He says, I don't remember. So she t- she, she, she explains to him the situation and she reminds him how her husband left and she went shopping and, and she warned him that the blood and everything should be finished and the bris should be over by the time she gets home. And then he remembered, he remembered the kid. And the kid comes in, he says, invites them in and the mother says, I want to tell you something. We don't know what's going on with this kid. This kid loves to learn. And this kid is making us crazy for the last year that he has to meet his male. And we told him, what do you care? It's some guy from Tel Aviv. No, I have to meet the male. And he's crying and he's driving us bananas. And finally, my, my husband said, just take him to the male. And then we had to do research to find out who the male was and who we got. And finally, we tracked you down. We got your address. We came to your house. And the boy wants to talk to you. So he says, no problem. He comes in. He gives the kid some refreshments, some drinks. And the kid starts talking to him. And the kid says, I want for my bar mitzvah, a talis and tefillin. This is a uh, kid. He knows that. And then shul, the, the boys, they wear talis and tefillin when they get bar mitzvah. And my parents don't want to buy me. And what should I do? And I really want to go to yeshiva. I don't want to go to any more mamachti dati, or mamachti, whatever he was. And I want help. And my parents don't want to help me. And I figured that if there was a year that was moist and nefesh to give me a bris, then maybe he'll be willing to help me to get talis and tefillin and go to yeshiva. And Taka and Echanami, he, he says, I'm going to help you. He took down the address and the phone number. He get, went collecting 
and he got money for them, bought this kid a talent and filling, and got this kid into a yeshiva, and the kid Taka went, and the t- kid Taka grew up, and today he's on a mizrachvant of one of the choshev koyulim in Eretz Yisrael. And where did it start? How did it happen? It happened because the racious, the beginning, was unbelievable. When you start something with a gewaldige schatzes, with a chuka, with a tefillah, with a connection, with a scarvest to the Rabbeinu Shalom, then we get a siyata de shmaya that the Rabbeinu Shalom is going to help us, Taka. So now when we come into the Meyad Din, the Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, we prepare ourselves for the next couple of weeks to go and to have a new schatzes. Forget about what happened till now. Let's move on. Let's start again. Let's say, let this beginning be a gewaldic, and that will cause us that we should take a gewaldic a year, and we should all have a ksiva v'chasim a Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.